Let's all go to the movies. It's another episode of Locked on A's. You are Locked on A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Pretty sure I just aged myself with that whole open. So I'll just say right up front, sorry about that. Welcome to another episode of Locked on A's. It's your daily podcast. Yep, your team every day. It's what we do. Living in an athletics world. We can't help it. Want to have uh, some guests on this evening. We're going to tell you all about them. And uh, beyond that, let you know what's going on with our friends at FanDuel. Same great deal we've been telling you about. They're still extending it. So in the middle of football season, how about a $5 money line bet? You do that. And if you're a new customer and your team wins, not asking too much here, $150 in bonus bets can be yours. Get over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and take advantage with FanDuel. Well, look at these faces. They're very familiar. Uh, There's Gabriel and there's Jared, the directors of Summer of Cell, the documentary all about us long-suffering Oakland A's fans in the season that was 2023. Hey, guys, you've been very busy since the last time we got together. We sure have. Yeah, we uh, we did a lot with uh, we were working a lot with the city um, to get those boxes out a lot going into those owners meetings. And then we followed um, one of the Oakland 68s, the head of the Oakland 68s, Jorge Leon, out to the owners meetings to try to track down the owners and and uh, let them know that the A's fans are, are here and uh, and want their team. So you literally followed Jorge? You're kind of stalkers then, aren't you? I mean, oh, yeah, as a documentary yeah. people, we have to do that, yeah. <laughs> Right. We we hide in the corner and then pop out goes on camera. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I watched enough episodes of uh of uh Predator, whatever that show was called. I, I know what it's like when somebody comes popping out. Okay, so you plan to go to, to Texas. I think we even talked about it. And then you got there. Was it everything you thought it would be? Did you have as much access as you wanted? Did you get the story that you went? I know you didn't get the result you wanted, but did you get an angle that could at least be moved into the movie? For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it was, you know, it, it was it was interesting going into it because we didn't know. It was pretty secretive about where it was going to be. Um, they didn't release information on it early on. So we did quite a bit of investigative investigations into where it could be and tracked down to two different hotels and found and basically got rooms at both those hotels so that we were covered. Um, and then when we actually got to Arlington that night, we got confirmation about where it was actually going to be. And it was one of the two hotels that we had found. Um, how, well, I got to know, how did you, I mean, you had a spy out there. Did you have somebody oh, in yeah. housekeeping? <laughs> we, how did you know? We had media people. And then uh, we actually called we actually looked at the hotels in terms of the the uh, the suites and saw were any of the hotels were either of these hotels booked up in their suites. And one of them live at Lowe's was, in fact, all the suites were taken between the dates of the MLB owners meetings, which is the middle of the week, which is a little weird. So, yeah, it was always pointing to that. But uh, we also had an, a, a hint that it was at a different place. So we were looking at two different places. And then did you have to scramble, get on the phone and cancel your other rooms before they charged you? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> hey, we're not coming. Please let us out of that. So um, when you when you knew you were at the right place, then what was the what was the game plan? Did you did you have a sort of a, did, did you get together and say, OK, we're going to camp out here. And then if this happens, we go there if that or did you just let the moment take you? Jared. Yeah. So um, it was. It was a lot of let the moment take us, but we we arrived in to the hotel and we decided to go in stealth mode because we didn't want to alarm anybody. So there's no A's gear on. We just look like some people. I, I think I had my A's hat, uh, this one here, and I yanked it off and I shoved it in my pocket. Uh, and we walked in, checked into our room, uh, dropped our stuff off, and then went and grabbed some breakfast and kind of were scoping things out to try and to identify who might be an owner. I think at one point 
Gabe, you said everyone I I think is an owner. <laughs> it's like it must be it's so it's is randomly. That is that one? <laughs> And so we, we went through that whole process. Um, and then after our breakfast, we're like, well, let's kind of wander around, see what's here. And we were walking up the flight of stairs in the lobby to the second level. And we got to the top and that's where we got stopped. And it was like, who are you with? We're like, Uh-oh. we we have a, a room here. This, this area is restricted. And so we all were, t- and I was looking at my phone, like trying to look something up. And I've looked up and everyone's turning around and they're like, why can't we go up there? We turn around and I go, ding, ding, ding. I think you we- found it. Yeah. yeah. And so, and then I think Gabe, you said, yeah, there's an MLB sign up there. And so yep. we're like, all right, we know where to, we, we know where to go. Let's uh, figure out what to do. And so from there it was, let's, let's go grab some, our camera, just be ready to record stuff. We went up to the room, set up the camera, got everything, walked down. And around that time, uh, I believe is when the airplane did the flyover. Right. Go so grab some footage of the airplane doing the flyover. And that went for like, felt like four hours. It was forever. It was. Kept yeah. going, you know, going. Um, and I believe it said, oh, goodness. Uh, keep keep the A's in, or A's belong in Oakland. A's belong in Oakland, yeah. Vote no. Yeah, A's yeah. belong in, vote no. Um, so that was, that was floating around. And so we grabbed some footage, wandered around and that we met a few media folks and then we walked in and that's, I think when security told us you can't record in here or else you're going to get kicked out. Even if you have a room here. Oh, I was going to say, even though yeah. you were guests. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They, they say, first even tried to kick us out yeah. for, for just being there. Like you can't just hang out in the lobby because we were, we were pretty obvious at that point what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even though we didn't really have our A's gear on at that point, we still had our cameras. We we were just sitting in the lobby waiting for people to come in and looking and pointing at different people. Um, so yeah, we we kind of gave ourselves away. So they came up to us originally and said, Oh, you can't just like sit here, you're gonna have to go. And we're like, Oh, we're actually we actually have a room here and that definitely was unexpected. Yeah, because I mean, at that point, yeah. you have as much right to be in the lobby as anybody, right? Exactly. I mean, if you are a you're a paying guest, you're yeah. not hurting mm-hmm. anybody. I mean, yeah. I guess they could say you were loitering, right? They yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> it, we'll loiter in our room. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. yeah, that's the thing. The, the lobby is next to the bar, which is was going to be open in an hour or two, and so it was. Mm-hmm. You know, there was definitely reason for us to be there. So. And and the other reporters were around in the same area as well. Yeah. So, um, but at that point, you know, we realized okay. Once they told us we can't shoot here, we were like, okay, well, let's let's go upstairs and get our actual A's gear on. So we went upstairs, got stay shirts on, came back down with the full the full A's regalia, gear, yeah, ready yeah. to go, yeah. Um, and we brought a bunch of gifts for the owners as well because our our idea from the beginning was try to approach them not in a angry way not even trying to necessarily pitch our point but just to say like you know we're big fans we're big mlb fans we love our team you know here's a gift to show how much we care about our team i hope you see how much a's fans oakland a's mm-hmm. fans care about keeping the team in Oakland. Right. Um, was there ever was there ever a thought that the video that you did which uh it's just amazing. We're going to have to show it again. It's that good. I mean, did you ever think that that actually might make a difference? It might uh, work on someone who was maybe on the fence and get them to go the other way. We were certainly hoping. Um, yeah. And we brought we brought a bunch of baseball mm-hmm. bat USB sticks that had the video on them. That that was part of the things that we were giving out. Um, one one thing that uh, we did have is. The videos that they received, whether it was the the DVD, they they had the DVD, but the all of the videos that were mailed out with the QR codes and the links and everything, that is being able to link to a video allows us to do all of the analytic tracking. Uh, and so I was on my phone checking, like, has anybody clicked on the link? Has anybody viewed the video? That's brilliant. And, and that's the kind of as that was going, I was like, hey, nobody's nobody's viewed it yet. So I don't think we they're they're just ignoring it at this point. If they've viewed it, they watched the uh, YouTube version or someone showed them the DVD. But like the link that we provided, it took a while. I think there's been a few hits since then. Um <laughs> But, I mean, who cares yeah. now, right? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll watch it now because there's no pressure, you yeah. know. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. by the way, we, there, we, there. 
Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, so, so we were giving them these gifts and that, then actually hotel security came to us again and said, well, you guys are soliciting. This is, you can't do this. And so we actually had to go bring the gifts up. We had to go put the gifts up in the room because we couldn't do that as well, I guess. Yeah. Wow. And we, we were also told that uh, there was a peaceful protest location that we could go <laughs> protest in across the street in the construction zone. So it was we're literally like, a construction yeah. zone. <laughs> like we're we're good. We're not going to do anything. Yeah, and because you would you would be paid so much attention across yeah. the street, yeah. you know, from the guys who are over here in the bar. I'm surprised when you said the bar opens in an hour. I'm surprised it was ever closed. It's Arlington. I mean they 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 like their they like their uh, brewskis in Dallas. I'm surprised that they, that thing's not 24 hours a day. For you sure. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Well, I'll tell you what else they like in Dallas. This is the perfect time to tell you, and you probably already know this. If you've seen Friday Night Lights, you know that uh, Texans love their football, and we're finding that they love their FanDuel. And who doesn't? i got to tell you what FanDuel is offering you right now is pretty cool. Here's the deal. You put down a $5 bet. It's a money line bet. Guys, it doesn't get any easier than that. You have two teams playing. Pick the one you think is going to win. There's no point spread involved. You just pick a winner. And if you do that, uh, a $5 bet gets you $150 in bonus bets. Then you can get in on all the fun after that. Once you've become a, a full-on bona fide member of FanDuel, yeah, you can get into things like overs and unders and player props and whether or not the bar is going to be open at the hotel in Dallas, all of that stuff. You can bet on anything, spreads, of course. Uh, and this week, I have a particular interest in watching the New Orleans Saints because if Derek Carr has one more game like he's had uh, the last couple of weeks, he might lose his job. So for that reason, well, I'm not. I, we can't talk about gambling. Yes, we can. Take the Saints. Okay, and the points. Locked On has launched its first ever. Oh, I got to tell you how to get there, I guess, don't I? FanDuel.com slash Locked On, and that gets you all the all the savings with FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Now I want to tell you, and you guys will be interested in this, first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel. It's on YouTube, and of course it comes from Locked On. It's called Locked On Sports Today, and what they do is basically aggregate all the best sports stories from the Locked On channels that are all over YouTube and anywhere you get your podcast and they put those together and then if the story's hot you can bet it's going to be covered from like every angle and of course the national stories too they cover all the sports locked on sports today on YouTube subscribe to the first ever national 24/7 sports streaming network was there a lot of media at the hotel when you guys were there mm. There was there was a th two three people from Japanese uh, networks and that were following Shohei Otani like all the yeah. news for them and then there were three writers John yeah. Shea Bill uh, or Bob Nightingale um, and then Michael Silverton from the what, Boston Globe. yeah so from, USA Silverton Today's, from where uh, the Boston Globe got you okay yeah yeah so they actually all came up to us pretty early on and and talk to us and we had a, we had a great talk with them for about 30 minutes and they got a that bunch was, of footage yeah. of the plane going over and everything like that and yeah that was after we were told to go peacefully protest across the street yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's crazy i mean they were treating you guys like you were three hookers sitting in the lobby oh, totally. right? <laughs> yeah. it was bizarre i mean yeah. so we had actually also we had we had printed out a whole binder of of info and pictures of all the owners because there's a lot of owners and we didn't we weren't familiar with all of their faces so we had that kind of sitting with us the whole time and so that from from the time that we were told that we couldn't give gifts we were really pretty much locked on sitting in the lobby waiting for people to come in and anytime we saw an owner you know we had the media people around us so we would kind of check in with them hey is that that person hey is that that person they would help oh us good out. yeah they helped um, you yeah and and i mean those guys would also go up and try to talk to the owners as they're going up to the room and checking in so we started <laughs> did, doing did you ever thing. go up to anybody and say uh you know start asking them questions and then find out that they're like the director of sales at the hotel <laughs> <laughs> there was one guy who was giving us a hard time and so at one point uh we went up to him and we said uh, i'm sorry do you work here and he's like uh well Kind of. And I was like, oh, do you know what time the bar opens? And, uh, <laughs> oh, I really wanted to just ask him really annoying questions throughout the day. Like, do, do they serve OJ here? Or is there like really mundane stuff? Because he was yeah. he was really big in the security side of things. 
But so um, you finally, though, did crack the code, so to speak, because you were able to engage some of these owners. You mentioned uh, before we started today that the uh, Chicago Cubs owner Ricketts was there and you had a chance to talk to him, right? Yeah, Ricketts was interesting. Ricketts was one. Uh, Jorge had talked to the Giants owner, uh, Larry, Larry Bear. Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I heard for, he took your for, shirt and just like threw it in his bag, right? He did. <laughs> he did exactly, exactly. Yeah. Thanks. And, yeah. And then Ricketts, uh, Ricketts came through, and and uh, he had also talked to Steinbrenner by then, and then Ricketts came up, and Ricketts actually talked to us for a little bit, and um, that was the first inkling of something something bad is happening like he mm -hmm. everything he said was pretty much an apology of some sorts you um, see it in his wow. eyes you could yeah. you could tell from what he was saying that he he felt bad for what was coming like he knew it already what was happening so whether or not they had all already decided which i'm pretty sure they had or he just knew that they didn't have enough votes um he yeah yeah at that point we were like okay i <laughs> I don't think we're going to win this. <laughs> Let's keep, we're going to keep trying, but I, it's, yeah. it's not looking good. Yeah. So were you getting that pretty much from everybody that you spoke to that like, this is a, a foregone conclusion and nothing we say or do is going to really make a difference. There's, there's one person that was very confused as to why it would pass. And I believe that was the, was that the GM of Houston that we were yeah, talking to? President maybe of Houston. President? Yeah, were, yeah, he was, he was very guys. much. Yeah, he's very much like it doesn't make sense. I don't know why they would pass it, but obviously he didn't have a vote. So, right, um, right. Yeah, yeah. We I think anybody who did have a vote was probably in lockstep. And as we kind of have talked about here on the show, I I know I know that there was at least one owner that wasn't real happy about this and that owner equaled two for sure and then there was a possibility of maybe a little consortium you know like you would see at a democratic national convention where they go huddle up and decide wait a minute we do have eight of us let's go i don't think it ever even got to that point and unfortunately it was the owner of the padres who passed away yeah. before uh they even started and he was the one who i think was in his heart from what i'm told was leaning towards actually voting no just kind of in protest but then ultimately i think he would have had a proxy because he was sick anyway but i think they would have voted whatever the league decides is best that's what we'll do and i have found that with these guys don't you think that it's kind of like i got your back you got my back it's sort of a a boys club where uh they all at the end of the day are going to do what they think everybody sort of wants to do i don't see a lot of mavericks here mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I I agree with that. I think that there, I think if there was any a time they would break the boys' club, it would have been over this because I don't personally feel like Fisher is is as well liked as other owners maybe uh, are even by other owners. Um, not that I got the just there of that at all, but it's just I don't know from th things that I've heard about how he utilizes the money that he has uh, for his baseball team. I don't think he's thought of super highly. Right. Well, that was the, uh, that was the scoop that we heard about Hal Steinbrenner, right? That he, mm -hmm. he especially is bugged by the fact that he has to keep writing a check every year. And that's, I, I don't think it's so much that he's writing the check. I think he, it's where the money goes after he writes the check. Meaning yeah. I don't see that you're putting this back on the field. I don't see that you're going out and spending the money on players or fixing your stadium or, doing anything except taking the money right yes i it was interesting because they it's from my understanding of the revenue sharing is to go to be putting a competitive team together on the field and i think it was like either cavill or um fisher or someone said that the ticket sales is what pays for the team on the field and I'm like, wait, what happened to the revenue sharing that you're supposed to be spending on that? Are you not spending it the way you're supposed to? And it came straight from their mouth. Uh, right. So it's it's a little confusing. It causes one to go, hmm, what's going on here? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, so yeah. the big the big moment we should probably get to this before we run out of time is that you actually had the chance to have some conversation with John Fisher, which nobody ever has. So tell tell me about that. Yeah. So we, you know, uh, he was one of the last people to come in. We, 
it was probably around a seven thirty, eight o'clock. Um, all the, pretty much all the owners had shuffled in at that point. Um, we had talked to a ton of them. They were all hanging out at the bar downstairs, um, in the lobby area, uh, talking with us, talking with reporters. And, uh, we first saw Dave Cavill come in, um, and he, he saw us and beelined, out of there <laughs> um, i could just see that guy being one that would put his head down and go yeah he doesn't want to talk to anybody restaurant yeah. we saw him hanging out in the restaurant <laughs> talking to people and then i honestly think he had to have crept through a back door because we had direct we had direct line of sight to the entrance and he never came back out of the entrance of that that he, maybe he crawled out maybe he got <laughs> down on all fours and snuck out i would there. have loved to see how he got out of there yeah yeah he was snaking well, his way through but so um, did um yeah so did he give you any indication that that he was sincere and really heard what you were saying and felt bad or was it more like look you know so, this is what i yeah, gotta do Fisher came in um and immediately everyone kind of went quiet because we had been wearing our a's gear all day they knew what was coming um uh, one of the giants gms i think one of the giants gm went over to him and pushed him behind a column and then you see him pop his head out and look at us and then pop back <laughs> behind the column and then he as well went into the restaurant we were like okay well we're probably not going to see him that's probably as much as we're going to get from him yeah. Sure enough, a few minutes later, though, he decided to come face us, which was pretty surprising to us. Um, he came back out. He said, you know, he's he said his shtick. I mean, he's you know, mm -hmm. he is a businessman. Um, his, so he definitely had his know. tone is very genuine. His he puts on a tone where like, I really I'm really concerned or I, I really care about this. But then what makes you kind of question what he's saying or is the tone sincere is when he says something and you're like wait that contradicts all of the facts that have been released over the past three months where what and, and you're like trying to match up the facts with what he's saying and you're like maybe it's just a tone so that he can get through the conversation and have people smile and shake his hand yeah. um yeah. but i don't know like what am i to say beyond just the impression that, that I got, like he definitely comes on off as somebody that's sincere, genuine, but you have to put the words that come out of his mouth up against the facts that are presented. And sure. They, they don't necessarily fully line up. So, yeah. And we, I mean, our goal with him, you know, we had talked before about what, what do we do if we actually get to have a conversation or to get to say anything to him. And the big thing we, you know, Jorge wanted to say, um, do the right thing, John, do the right thing. And that is exactly what he started with. Uh, Jorge said, do the right thing, John. And John went into this whole thing of, yeah, I've been trying for 18 years and, you know, and, and then Jorge actually had a great comeback. He's like, yeah, you know what? I actually wrote a paper to keep the A's in Oakland when I was in high school in 1998. So I've been in doing this a lot longer than you, yeah. which is eventually what led Fisher. He got so defensive that he said, well, this, you know, this, this is harder for me than it is for you. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. now you know why he, he, they keep him indoors. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. don't yeah. let him out be for that yeah. reason. But in a way it's kind of cool. It's like, you got Greta Garbo to talk to you, or you got, uh, you got Mr. Bean to have an in-depth conversation <laughs> with you or, uh, you know, uh, pen from Penn and Teller, you know, I mean, th he's a famous silent person, John totally. Fisher. Don't totally. talk yeah. to anybody. And, and we wanted, you know, we, we wanted to, we wanted to get through to him how much this team means to us and to Oakland and, uh, and, you know, come try to try to pull on some heartstrings. I want to believe that the reason he broke and ended up saying what he did was because we kind of had gotten to him through that 10 minute mm -hmm. conversation of, of, you yeah. know, of pleading um, our case and not, you know, we never, we weren't putting him down. We weren't like, we weren't being aggressive to him. Um, but we definitely wanted him to know how much this means to us and to the fans in Oakland. And I think it ended up yeah. working. And, and so, yeah, Jorge said his piece at the end as well, you know, do the right thing, John. And uh, later that night we went to go have dinner in the restaurant and he was having dinner with the giants uh, GM and uh, Jared and Jorge went over to him and, uh, and gave the Giants GM one of our boxes um, with, with the stay in Oakland signs all over it and everything else. Right in front and of Fisher. Yeah. And, and uh, said, thanks, John, for talking to us. And, 
and Jorge once again reiterated, you know, do right. the right thing, John, do the right thing. So, right. yeah, yeah, He's there's the box here. right there. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I, I was just told that it's uh, it's Teller that never speaks from Penn and Teller. Uh, yes. uh, yeah. Right. right. Penn, yeah. Penn Gillette talks too much. OK, yes. so um, I guess to wrap this whole thing up with the owners meetings, was it mission accomplished or do you feel like you didn't quite get what you want? I know the vote didn't go the way you wanted, but besides that, do you st did you get something that was at least usable for the film? I think, I mean, I think the, the yeah. scene itself with, with Fisher is great. Um, you know, we, we didn't have, we couldn't have cameras rolling when he came over, but we have some audio of it. Um, we do have video of the interaction at the table. Um, we're giving him the box at the dinner table. So we do have some video of it. We have a good story. We followed Jorge, you know, I think we showed, showed the passion of the A's fan base. And, and to me, I think that's always going to be our goal. Uh, right. No matter what is, is just trying to show that first. And so, so how do you, um, and, and I know when we spoke last time, you said that it's kind of an ongoing process. You're not quite sure when it's going to be finished. You'll know it when you get there, but, you got to have some sort of end of the road, right? I mean, you can't yeah. you can't be working on this for 10 years. I mean, I would think you'd you'd want to get it out at some point. So, how how are you going to how's it all going to wrap up? I guess it's still yeah. unknown, isn't it? Well, to some degree, there's there's still even with the vote not going our way, there's still a lot of obstacles that the A's still have to overcome for anything to be solidified. So, there is the state or schools over stadiums referendum plus sure. the lawsuit that's going through plus financings to finance the billion dollar project. Um, and then it, there's protests being scheduled for next season. But I think the biggest uh, indicator is what happens with the schools over stadiums that will give us a really good clue of where things will go. Right. Um, but there's who knows, there might be some some stuff that arises in the next couple months uh we should keep our eyes open for january 15th with the uh deadline for the binding agreement to go to remain on revenue sharing for the a's um i don't know if they've signed anything or if anything's approved yet uh they still needs to have that stadium deal in place right uh, so january 15th is something to look out for and then the status of schools over stadiums i think are big key key points to keep our eyes open to where this story is going to go. Well, you'll know by opening day whether or not they're going to get this thing on the ballot for sure. You'll know by then. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's good. Uh, you know, Monday, they're going to show us the pretty pictures. You're looking forward, <laughs> I'm sure, to seeing the the renderings. Those are going to happen. And like you, I'm trying to figure out where every, everybody's going to be because I don't think they want uh, a turnout of anybody that might have any anything other than great things to say, right? So mm -hmm. I got a feeling this is going to be pretty nip and tuck. I doubt that there'll be a Q&A. Let's just put it that way when it's over. And John Fisher speaks again. He's coming to yeah. Vegas to uh, to uh, you know speak to the cameras. <laughs> maybe it's starting to get good to him. I mean, he did it. He did it at the owners meetings. And, and you know, maybe now he's like, why haven't I done this all these years? I kind of like it. So I'm going to be yeah. I'm going to be the new John Fisher. You know, you can't <laughs> shut me up. I don't know. But I would I'll love be, that. Uh, with are, how are you coming to <laughs> he steps are you, on his words and messes things up i would love for him to talk every day if possible every day yeah so are you going to come to vegas for monday's uh dog and pony show or are you just gonna <laughs> no, watch it we're, we're gonna no. stay away from that one <laughs> all right well i'll be uh obviously paying attention to what you guys are doing please stay in touch and oh, well. uh hey opening day if they do what they say they're gonna do which is not go into the stadium pay yep. to park i guess and then yep. have the world's largest tailgate party. You got to get that. I mean, that's oh, yeah. we'll be in, there in a sense, it's full sure. circle for you because you were there for the reverse boycott. So it would yeah. be kind of, kind of like to me. That's that's kind of connecting the dots a little bit. Yeah, and then exactly. Uh, and there's then you put this a few things coming up. There's there's even mm -hmm. a, a possible fan fest thing that might might happen um, sometime before the beginning of the season that that people are putting together. So there's definitely yeah. gonna be stuff coming up. Um, as Horry has been saying, they thought we were mad last year. Wait till they see us this year. Right. Well, uh, we'll be watching, of course. And I think that the neat thing, too, is, is as we started this tonight, I was like, well, what's to be achieved with this film? I mean, obviously, it'll resonate. How are you going to watch? I cry watching your sizzle reel. So uh, besides the emotion of it all, I was thinking about this. 
if nothing else, it sure says to Major League Baseball, when you're thinking of expanding, if the A's do indeed leave, you will, I would think you would watch Summer of Cell and you'd go, name me another place in the world that is as ready to have some good happen to them than Oakland and the East Bay. There isn't any place. I mean, the, the, the Expos, you know, when this happened with them, they were contracted. Major League Baseball already owned them. It's a completely different thing. And you guys have been able to, to capture that essence, that emotion that just relates so well to the story of, hey, you're, you're going to award two new teams. One of them should be in Oakland, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yeah, mm. for sure. I think a big part of our story is is showing why the city and the fans are worthy of, of this team. I mean, yeah. we have we have great fans. We have a great city. And and we deserve to have baseball in our in our town. Yep. Couldn't say it any better. Thank you both for Thank being you. here. Appreciate that. And we'll obviously you'll stay in touch and you'll let us know when we're ready to tell the next chapter of the Summer of Cell. OK, sounds great. Thanks so much, Wayne. Love yeah. having these guys on, and we will again. And thank you for being here. If you're an everydayer, let us know that in the comments. I'm surprised when I find these people that have been lurking and never, you know, jumped forward and said, hey, I'm here. <laughs> so if you want to do that, please do it because I love it. Uh, thumbs up, of course, spreads the channel everywhere. And subscribe so you'll know when I'm back here with another episode every day. It is your team every day. Locked on A's. Until next time, I'm Wayne Coy, and you keep on swinging.